Good afternoon. Um, on behalf of Bob Shear and Melissa Shear, as well as the entire team of associates that makes up our, our fantastic business, I would like to thank Food Engineering Magazine, as well as all of you, uh, for the opportunity uh, to speak in front of you today and hopefully share some of our story with you. Just as a brief introduction as to who we are, um, Shears Foods, uh, with very humble beginnings almost 35 years ago, started out as a distributorship uh, for other uh, potato chips and eventually realized that they could do things better. Um, in that time that has elapsed, we have grown to encompass over a million square feet of manufacturing, basically six sites over five different states. Uh, we're up to over 1,500 associates. What we're probably best known for are our kettle chips. Uh, we're the nation's largest manufacturer, but in addition to that, we do standard chips, tortillas, uh, pretzels, as well as multi-grain and extruded products. We joined Energy Star in 2006, and as of 2007, started accelerating our sustainability program, which became a core fundamental in how we operate our business and is a very big part of the project that I'm going to talk about today. What that vision was or meant to us, um, I want to go back to 2008. We saw an opportunity to expand production. With that, we thought we would use this as a showcase to take the best of everything that we know and understand about manufacturing, salty snacks, as well as being able to create what we believed to be the most sustainable site that we could at the time. Plant layout. Um, I don't have a laser pointer, but what we wanted to do was focus on efficiency, and that came from everything from the layout of the floor, flow of materials and process. What you see in the upper right-hand corner that is in the yellowish color is our phase one, and it took nine months to complete. Representing about 47,000 square feet, we wanted to make sure that all raw materials came in one side of the building with flow of process to the center of the building and then product being palletized and executed out the end. What did this allow us to do? Basically, three months after we opened up last March, we made a decision to go ahead and complete phase two. Phase two being the blue portion on the left side and down here at the bottom of the slide. Basically a modular approach. Still raw materials coming in on the one side of the building, but all flow now coming to the center of the building and executing into what is now warehouse and staging areas. If we should decide, decide to move forward with a phase three, then all we have to do is extend the property on this side and basically add more processing, oh, I'm sorry, more processes or more manufacturing lines. Again, everything feeding to the center and then executing out one side. Part of what we focused on was automation. This included process controls, operational controls, and building controls. The first of these, everything is done with touchscreen automation. Our processes, everything from raw material handling, storage and preparation, corn cook, milling, mixing, proofing, baking, and frying, as well as packaging is all handled through automated screens. We used Wonderware as a backbone uh, using SQL Server automation. It allows us to track critical processes and basically allows entire processing lines to be run with only three screens. Operational controls quality systems, production scheduling, as well as maintenance are all handled by software packages. Most of these are widely available. Uh, in the case of maintenance, Maintenance Connection is our um, system to handle work order management as well as preventative maintenance and tracking of work order completion and emergency work orders. Production scheduling is an internally created software package. We call it MIP. It allows us to handle everything from labeling of packages to uh, a bigger understanding of scheduling labor uh, to be able to handle the flow of materials through the plant. Quality control came about two years ago in the form of the Infinity software package, allowing us to put in place very specific quality key uh, process indicators and, and putting alarms and signals to make sure that our staff knows what needs to be done and in what time. Finally, building controls, and I'll get to some of the detail later. This is a big part of our energy savings. Again, uh, it's a SQL server-based system designed with the help of Wonderware, but basically heating, ventilation, cooling systems, our steam boilers, hot water boilers, 
uh, sanitation skid and, and raw material storage in the form of corn silos and oil storage are all handled through these touch screens. Sustainability is going to make up the better portion of my presentation. When we had this opportunity with the new facility, what our biggest focus was, was sustainability. Again, it became a core fundamental for Shears. With that, we decided to use the system created by United States Green Building Council, LEAD, Leadership in Energy and uh, Environmental Design. Could I have you humor me, just by a show of hands, how many people in the room are aware of United States Green Building Council and LEAD? Outstanding. Well, I, I guess I can end this presentation. Um, it seems like that's actually the best showing I've seen yet. Uh, with this system, uh, how do I say, Green Building Council had its origins in commercial buildings, uh, office buildings, schools, things like that. Uh, it's been very reluctant that people in manufacturing have used these systems, and I think a lot of that hesitancy is in the fact that the energy demands or prerequisites for the program have to include everything in your building. For manufacturing, that's a world of difference away from commercial. If you're a commercial building, you need to worry about HVAC in the shell, insulation, windows, your building structure. In our case, that is probably about 8% of our energy savings. In the case of manufacturing, most people in the room will recognize 80 plus percent of your energy is on the floor. When you're cooking, when you're baking, when you're frying, when you're packaging, those things demand a tremendous amount of energy. So one of our biggest hurdles was meeting a 14% reduction when we could only find eight in the building. This meant we needed to reinvent and innovate new processes to support our current manufacturing. With that, our resulting win was in June of last year. We're very proud of all the work that it took to get here, but being named the first food manufacturing plant in the world to get platinum is not so much a recognition for us, but a way that hopefully we can share these same successes or strategies with other people to help them grow their sustainability programs as well. Just to describe the eco-friendly site in terms that are outside of energy, um, part of the LEAD program and its benefit to you and your organization is that it's a very broad program. It stretched us to think in ways that we had never thought about before. We had managed energy scorecard and tracking at all of our sites. When it came to the new building and a new facility, we had to consider very carefully everything from the solar reflectivity of our roof and our parking lot areas, as well as the materials that we use to construct the building. So in this facility, we made great gains in using locally harvested materials, ones with high recycled content, limiting heat island effects with that solar re reflectivity. The grounds are basically replanted. Uh, when we moved in, I would say it was a green field, but it was artificially planted with grass as erosion control. What we had to do at the end of our project was go back and replant with indigenous species to Ohio in our specific region. So it's trying to restore things to a better state than when we ever moved in. Finally, associate well-being. Something, again, it doesn't carry a very easily uh, identifiable cost or, or, or uh, return on investment. However, the difference in our associates that work at this building, skylights, daylighting systems are tremendous. The, the productivity that we get out of our associates and the environment that they're able to work in, all the systems, all the rooms in this building have thermal comfort control as well as lighting controls that allow our associates to fine tune things to make them as comfortable as possible in their daily activities. Water conservation, starting with our process, uh, going back and looking at our original equipment manufacturers to come up with new ways to do things. We implemented a low water corn cook process. This basically saves 180 gallons every single batch of corn that we cook for tortilla chips. We use a flashless condensate return system. Again, we limit steam use because it's a very poor way to transfer energy to, to our steam jacketed kettles for our corn cook. But with that, as we're returning condensate back to the boiler, we want to do it without losing any of that energy. So we're not flashing anything to the roof or to the outside of the building. Low flow wash nozzles, waterless urinals, dual flush closets, sanitation wands, these are things that are, are not new technologies. They've been out there for a long time. But pulling them all together into a comprehensive strategy to save water 
is, is something that we prided ourselves on in this project. Finally, and it's actually the photo at the bottom, kind of difficult to see, uh, the black tank on the left side of the picture, we went with rainwater harvesting. Basically, for, for our process and the other systems in the building, we were able to save 40% water over industry standard. We bumped that by another 20% savings by installing rainwater harvesting. Out of nine downspouts on our roof for phase one, we're using one to recycle water from the roof. Basically, three sets of filtering, a vortex filter, a, a cylinder canister filter, and UV. It basically comes out potable quality that you could drink. We choose to use it only in evacuation of solids in the, in the restrooms. But this saves up to 17,000 gallons of water every month. Focusing down on the energy use, what I'm going to do is talk through a couple of the innovations we were able to hit with our processes. I've already spoke about low water corn cook. In addition to saving 180 gallons every batch that we cook, it also contributes to retaining thermal energy in the kettle so that we're not starting over again from scratch to try to heat that with steam energy. The savings to us is basically 1.7 billion BTUs each and every year. The tortilla chip oven, how we bake our tortilla chips. This is a real standout for us and we're very proud of the relationship that we built with our original equipment manufacturer. We drove back in the bidding process to find this equipment. Some people presented the same old, same old, the ovens that have been out there forever that use ribbon burners. We were very happily uh, engaged by another very small manufacturer who decided to do things differently. This oven uses, instead of ribbon burners, 24 concave ceramic element burners. It's using a convective and a radiative heat that is much more efficient at baking the water out of our tortilla chips. Between those burners and the fact that we're sealing the cavities in the oven so there's no drafting, if you look at other ovens, what is very, very common is that there's an open architecture, basically ribbon burners on a structure, and they're covered with a shell. But if you reached your hand up, there's a very good chance that you could touch the ribbon burners from the underside. What that contributes to is a lot of excess air from the room drafting through the oven. You're heating it for no real reason and then just blowing it out your stack. We've eliminated two-thirds of that drafting by enclosing the chambers of the oven. All told, this is almost saving us half of the natural gas on this process, equating to about 16 billion BTUs a year. This is just a really quick diagram showing how we started looking at things and how they integrated together. What you're seeing uh, off to the left is actually our oven, the discharge, and then a, a belt that allows the moisture to redistribute in the chips. But what we had to understand to effectively do anything with our waste energy is where does it all go? How much is consumed or wasted by the oven? How much energy is trapped in our chips when they come out the other side? And then what is going up the stack? And what we found is that critical component, even though I told you we eliminated two-thirds of the drafting of the oven, that one-third, instead of going up the stack at 600 degrees, we are now rerouting and, and reclaiming to use for other purposes in the plant. And that is the skid on the right-hand side with the, the white tanks. Liquid chimney design, that's what you're looking at. Uh, the pipe coming into it is basically that 600 degree air. Not only is it 600 degrees, but it's also carrying the moisture that we just pulled off of our tortilla chips. With that, we're splitting about 50-50 between latent and sensible energies. Basically, what we're saving is about 3 billion BTUs. This heat exchanger runs that energy across stainless steel coils and we're raining water down over top of it. That's in a closed loop that then exchanges the energy with two water glycol loops. Ends up heating the majority of our building year round, but when we don't need that building heat, it's being redirected for preheating corn cook water as well as our sanitation skid. Here's some more pictures of the recovery system. Something that we had to be concerned about in the design was that we were gonna, do, we're gonna rain out this energy, but then it's gonna be at a very low temperature, basically 130 degrees Fahrenheit. With that, we're able to grab a lot of energy, but then where do you find a use for it? And that's where putting it to the HVAC to cover the building needs for heating, as well as for sanitation water and corn cook, turned out to be the best applications for reusing that energy. 
summary of the results. And this is basically, and I didn't go the entire building, this is limited to that tortilla line alone. 27 billion BTUs a year between electrical and gas, gas being the largest portion of those savings. That tortilla line is going to save nearly $300,000 a year in operational costs. Greenhouse gas, we're offsetting over 1,000 metric tons. That's the equivalent to removing almost 200 cars off the road. And we're talking about a single line. So even small things that you think may be insignificant can add up to a lot of environmental impact. And finally, the, the last point, and that is sustainability. Shears believes wholeheartedly that there should be no secrets in sustainability. There are so many ways you can cut your teeth competitively in other areas. If there's something that we can come across or innovate or a discovery or even a failure that we can share with somebody else that's going to help them positively impact the environment and our future generations, we're willing to share that. With that, I'm going to play a really brief video. When the sun comes out, most of the electric lights usually go dim at the new Shears Foods Millennium Manufacturing Facility in Massillon, Ohio, one of the world's most eco-friendly snack food manufacturing plants. As part of a package of energy-saving solutions in the plant, built from the ground up to maximize sustainability by one of North America's fastest-growing snack food companies. Sunlight from window banks and skylights feed sensors, which, combined with occupancy data, control the amount of high-efficiency T8 fluorescent light provided in the plant. This feature, along with many other energy-saving ideas, allows shears to use 30.4% less natural gas and electric than industry best designs. It's one of the primary reasons the green shears facility has earned a platinum leadership in energy and environmental design designation by the United States Green Building Council, one of the highest possible recognitions for sustainability practices in America. It's the first lead platinum snack food manufacturing plant in the world. Shears is headquartered in nearby Brewster, Ohio. Bob Shear, co-founder, chairman, and CEO, talks about the impact of the new facility. With the construction of our LEED certified manufacturing facility, that it has taken us um, to the next step in our sustainability goal for our company. Um, it's our commitment to, um, to our people, to our partners, um, to our products, and to the planet in which we um, work and live. Operating in communities throughout the country, you know, it's our responsibility to conserve and uh, preserve the environment. We're definitely a leader in the industry. What we've accomplished here is that we have set the um, bar for which all other um, companies in our community would be looking at to, um, to see what we have done with sustainability. In another sustainability feature at the new facility, all heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems are tied into a centralized control system that continuously monitor building pressures, temperatures, outside air intake, and humidity. Water usage has been reduced by 60% by installing low flow fixtures and by employing a rainwater harvesting system which collects and reuses up to 17,000 gallons of rainwater each month. Shears, whose products are enjoyed by consumers across North America, is planning to adapt as many of the energy saving concepts as possible in other manufacturing and distribution facilities which are located elsewhere in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Virginia, Texas, and Oregon. And everything that we do sustainable in one plant, we retrofit it to our uh, other plants so that um, our goal is to have all of our um, plants uh, LEED certified. The company produces its own Shears brand potato chips and other snack products as well as manufacturing a wide range of private labeled and contract manufactured snacks for other companies across the continent. Operationally, Shearer's new 3,000 pound per hour tortilla chip production system consumes 47% less natural gas per pound of product made when compared to industry equivalents. The energy efficient oven was a direct result of Shearer's working with its vendors to achieve the company's sustainable goals. Any wasted heat from the fryer and oven is recovered by a heat reclamation system, with the excess energy being used to heat the building, supply preheated water for corn cooking processes, and supply heated water for sanitation processes. 
you're in manufacturing, we happen to use a lot of natural resources in the, in, in the process. I think it's everybody's duty and responsibility to preserve what we have, and it just comes with the territory. In construction of the new facility, 22% of the materials used contained recycled content, including structural steel and concrete, and nearly 30% of the components were locally harvested and manufactured from within a 110-mile radius of the Millennium site. 100% of the wood products used in the building are approved by the Forestry Stewardship Council to guarantee sustainable forestry practices. In Shear's quest for the ultimate in sustainability, the Ohio-based company has even created a special mission statement dealing with the environment. We thrive for a world of sheer perfection. This passion for a better world is evident in our products, our people, and our commitment for a more prosperous future. At Shears, we provide goodness beyond the bag. The new Millennium Manufacturing Plant, a graphic example of sheer perfection in the way we treat the planet. Thank you. Just, just as a, uh, a post note or a follow up, phase two, which I suggest we've completed phase one in nine months. Right now we're in the process of commissioning phase two and sustainability has not stopped. Basically we're taking it again to the next level. We're installing a million and a half gallon anaerobic digestion system for treatment of our process water. This will allow us to generate methane and hopefully use it back at the plant for a secondary purpose. Additionally, th we're installing a brand new continuous line with a much, much larger uh, liquid chimney design and it will again heat all of the new space in the building as we go from 40 some thousand square feet to well over 100. So with that, I appreciate your time and your patience today.